Bamboo Labs was nice enough to send me the CMYK bundle from their filament collection. So let's take a look at how to create these cool lithophanes using the filament bundle. The bundle comes with CMYK, which is the cyan, magenta, yellow, and key. So here we have the backlight with a diffuser. And you can see our three colors here, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And when you combine them here, you get your different color profiles. So yellow and cyan, you got your greenish, uh, you got your cyan and magenta where you get this purple, and then the yellow and magenta gives you a bit of like an orangey red. And then in order to get darker spots and shadows, we stack layers of white. As you can see with one layer, two layers, and three layers, it gets darker and darker, and then you can create the shadows. So let's hop into Bamboo Studio and the computer and see how these are produced. So we're going to start by heading over to lithophanemaker.com. It's a free lithophane STL creation tool online, which is great. So we're going to choose a file. And for me, I have a picture of my dog, 2962. Just enjoying the sun on the patio here. Uh, we do want to be able to crop and there's a few things we need to change here. So first layer height, we want to be 0 0.15. And the width on this one, we're going to make 108. And the height is going to be 144. So you can make it 108 by 144 is the size of the kit with the backlight. Uh, if you're not using the backlight that you buy from Bamboo, then you could make the size as whatever size you want it to be. Um, but for me, I'm doing 108 width by 144 height because it's in a portrait uh, orientation. And the rest of it, you can leave the same. Uh, there's also this select palette, which we leave at one, which is the default. And then we also get to play around with cropping. So I want to come in here and zoom in on my dog. So I'm going to bring this all the way down. I know that I need to be at about 28 is where I had it before. And you get to play around with where the location lands. So that looks pretty good to me. And you just have to put in an email here and create the STL. And it'll download on its own automatically. So now I have image 2962 saved as a zip. This is the image that it produces when it says show expected image. I find this to be very pixelated and grainy compared to the actual final result. Uh, so this is really just a preview and not what the actual end result will look like. So now we've jumped into Bamboo Studio. Um, I have the CMYK bundle imported as my AMS settings. So I have the all four colors that I need. And now I can bring in those files that we created on the lithophane creation site. So I'll add some parts here. I've unzipped that folder into its own folder that is no longer zipped. So 2962 is the one we were working with. And you'll highlight all of these STL files at once and you'll open them. And when it says load these files as a single object with multiple parts, you're going to click yes. So this is now one singular part. And we can go over to the left side of the screen here and do some object editing and it tells you which layers need to be what color. So cyan, cyan, magenta. So I can hit two on my keyboard, switch it to magenta, uh, four on my keyboard for the white layers and three on my keyboard for yellow. So now all of the colors are correct throughout this lithophane. And we do need to make sure that some of our other settings are correct. So the first layer height needs to be 0 0.15, which we've got now. And the top layers need to be three. And the bottom layers need to be three. And then we also want 100% infill. It's going to give you a little warning saying grid can't do 100% density, and we'll hit yes, it'll change it to rectilinear. 
and that's fine. That's also one that they want you to set differently. And we also want to uncheck slow down for overhangs. That is all of the settings that you need to do in Bamboo Studio. We started from a 0.2 nozzle profile, and that's important because 0.2 will usually come with a 0.1 millimeter layer height as standard. I did a couple prints at the beginning where I chose to use a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and I didn't notice that the layer height I was using was 0.2, so I actually lost a lot of the color information when I printed it, but it did print a lot faster. So there's some trade-offs there. Anyways, we're ready to slice this. So we'll hit slice. This may take a little while. Um, there's a lot of information in there. So now we've sliced this file. We can take a look at what those layers look like as we run through them. So you can see all of the layers past layer seven are just white. And that's just all shading. And before that, you get some of the color, which are creating the right shades. And your initial layer, which is just all white. So from here, we could print the plate, but I've already printed those. So let's take a look at the results. The assembly is really straightforward. You have a frame, which the file will be located in the description. You have a backlight that just slides in the back here. Until it clicks, a little port there. And you have a diffuser, and that file will also be in the description, which slides into this slot here. Now you're ready to put a litho pin in the, in the front. So you can pick from your prints that you made and Slide that in there. A little bit of a, a press fit. And you can just... So I made a couple mistakes while slicing these and we'll take a look at the comparison between a couple different settings and how they look. So to start, I decided to leave a 0.4 nozzle size on the printer to begin with, uh, even though they recommend 0.2 millimeters for all these. Um, and I think the results were actually half decent. So here's a 0.4 millimeter nozzle size at 0.1 layer heights. And the next one here this is 0.2 millimeter nozzle size with the 0.1 layer heights. So you can see that direct comparison. I'll put them side by side in the video in the editing here. And you can take a look and make your own decisions, your own judgment. Another setting that I played with was the layer heights. So this is a 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle with a 0 0.2 millimeter layer height. And you can see that I lost a lot of the color from the original image. And that's because I lost some of those layers where I was stacking the colors in going to a 0 0.2 millimeter layer height as opposed to the recommended 0 0.1. So I probably wouldn't do that. Um, you can slice it in that STL generator to be 0 0.2 millimeter heights, um, but I still think the color looks way better when you do it properly and just go to the 0 0.1. You actually get all those greens. All the green was lost because the yellow must have just been canceled out when it sliced. And this last one is similar to that previous one where this is 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle with 0 0.2 layer heights. Uh, you can see that the colors are kind of a bit reddish and not quite brown. Um, and then compared to the 0 0.1 layer heights. You actually get all the proper shading and colors and this looks way better. Let me know what you think in the comments below. One last note is that the backlight doesn't come with its own USB-C cable or power brick, so you'll have to pick one of those up on your own.
I hope you liked the video. Any information or links that I used in this video will be in the description, and I'll see you in the next one.